All right, you ready? Okay, uh, we will call the uh, commissioner's court a workshop a meeting. It's uh, J June 14th at 1.30 in the admin building, 200 South Texas Avenue, Suite 106. Uh, we call to order, and the second is a presentation and discussion of the Brazos County Department of Office's proposed budget request for FY2223. And I don't know whether there's anybody here that's listed on here that may be on a time crunch. Uh, I mean, we can take them in this order. I think Katie just listed them as the, maybe as they came in or something. Uh, if there's not, we'll go in order uh, that they're listed. But unless there's somebody that's really got a tr time crunch or something they have to go to. Okay, Eric, go ahead. Is that, is that different than this? We went ahead and printed it for you. Oh, you printed it. Oh, we had so many copies. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I don't really want to drag these back. So. <laughs> <laughs> it now becomes our problem. Should we, should we distribute them to the audience? <laughs> Thank you. No kidding, Eric. You want to pass them out to anybody yeah, interested? Really yeah. yeah. um, it's all the uh, employees except for. <laughs> Judge, commissioners, good afternoon. Um, I really wasn't sure what to expect today. I was glad to have these guidelines. I, I think I'm going to be able to adhere to all these guidelines without forcing anything into executive session. If I stray from that somehow, though, I'm sure you will let me know. Eric, um, if I could interrupt for just a second. Did everybody get a copy of the guidelines? Yes? Yes? No? Okay. Would you give one to Judge Hill, too? This part of the budget meetings, hearings, can be, we are um, walking a fine line between transparency and um, federal guidelines with regards to privacy. And so we're going to, if no names, and no position names if you only have one of those positions in your office and people can obviously identify who they are, okay? New positions, obviously we don't know who they are yet, so those are open for discussion. Elected official salaries are public information and open for discussion. Well, again, I, I think I'm going to be able to adhere to these guidelines with uh, without issue. I, I am confident, though, that I have violated several of the cardinal rules of PowerPoint presentations. Uh, I mean, I've got a slide in here that's nothing but text. That's rule number one. I'm sure that there are slide background colors and room lighting conflicts that I, I couldn't address properly. I will say that probably the bigger cardinal rule is I've always heard your really shouldn't be the first one to make a presentation after lunch. And I've always been given to believe it's because the audience, having had a large, heavy lunch, may tend to doze off on you. <laughs> it never occurred to me that I, as the presenter, having had a big, heavy lunch, <laughs> may, never mind. That didn't go anywhere, did it? We'll wake you up. <laughs> Um, so I, I really want to start this with the, this first graph and walk you through this real quick. Um, when I first got here in uh, December of 03, the IT department had 13 full-time employees. And in that 18 years since, we have grown to 34 full-time employees, in, including me. But what I really want to do is I wanted to kind of point out to you um, where along that timeline some things have happened that have contributed to that growth. So for example, in FY08, we inherited the DVR surveillance camera systems from the building maintenance department. Uh, they had been historically installing DVR surveillance camera systems and we'd been asked to help support that. And it got to the point where we were doing more support than, I mean, it made more sense for us to take that on. 
within flat line for about four years at, at 18 <coughs> full-time employees. And then in 2012, again, from the building maintenance department, we inherited the telephone system. Uh, at that time, the <coughs> building maintenance employee who was responsible for managing the old Nortel system retired. And so that position was then moved into IT and reclassified as a network engineer. Um, in FY13, we inherited courtroom audio uh, support again from, from building maintenance. Um, at that time, I created the audio video specialist position and I brought Trevor Lansdowne in from, from the Expo Center. Um, and then uh, in 2015, we inherited elections work from the county clerk's office. Uh, in that year, we created the very first applications administrator position in the IT department. Following uh, the next year, we implemented Odyssey and that required a large jump in, in personnel. We had to have another help desk person. We had to have a, a second application administrator. That same year, we created another assistant network administrator. Uh, the following year, we inherited the radio communications from the, from the sheriff's office. Um, in that year, I created the communications manager to, to manage <coughs> radios as well as mobile devices like county, county issued cell phones. And then, uh, of course, most recently in FY20, we implemented Oracle, which uh, alone required uh, four more applications administrators. So we, we've been growing uh, at, at quite, a, quite a pace, uh, but there is good reason behind all of that. I'm going to bring this slide back up later in the presentation, and I will o overlay this graph with uh, another line that will be uh, of interest when we start talking about um, Where to, where to place everybody. What's the term I'm looking for? Space, Space needs. Thank you, ma'am. Space needs. Um, so moving on then to the first, my first priority. I've requested four positions this year. My first priority is a senior services manager position. Now, um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. This was recommended by Judge Peters and Ed Bull. Um, the rest of you will remember back in the spring, I had come and visited with you individually, privately, about doing some restructuring in the IT department because at the time I had three vacancies. Uh, I had had a, a retirement, I had had uh, a death, and in trying to refocus the remaining human resources that I did have uh, to try to get the work done, I recognized that there was, that we were missing some critical cross-training, um, that I had a, an assistant network administrator doing inventory <clears throat> management work that needed to be recovered or resumed back from that person. No reason for them to be doing that work. And so there was a number of different issues that I wanted to try to address, and one of which was uh, strengthening the asset management and, and inventory management, um, something that we have, I won't say struggled with, but it's, it's time-consuming to manage all of the acquisitions, getting them into our asset system, tracking them, uh, getting ready to replace them, budgeting, forecasting for upcoming budgets and that sort of thing. So I had talked to all of y'all about doing some restructuring. Well, in lieu of the restructuring that we had discussed, um, the judge and Ed had suggested maybe what I'd do is just ask for a brand new position. And so with that in mind, this was the, in so fact, you, still I, is the Eric, current. Eric, let, me, yes, sir. let me interrupt you. It makes it appear that Ed and I had advocated four positions. I, I don't remember that that way. I know you were, you'd come to us and were looking at a way to restructure, and I think we had some suggestions and needed to, if you're going to ask for it, you needed to adjust the, the ask. I mean, I, what I remember was that I felt like we've, we've done a, the court has talked a lot about uh, succession planning in, in a lot of departments, and, and we've, actually push that in in others and that was one of the things that we talked about was a an assistant director what yeah i don't know what we title it but someone right under you that would could um you know something if you were not there for a while you could have somebody there to, to fill in and if you decided to retire one day that you're grooming someone that i would hope that we could uh have that succession plan so that was one of the positions that i thought probably was needed as you know just a suggestion yeah. and then we know that uh, uh, implementation of any uh, software has always been difficult at 
at the least, and it's 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 been a problem. And so, and we recognize that you've had some staff over there. Oracle is the last uh, uh, software that we are continuing to implement, and I felt like you had uh, maybe had some employees who were spending lots of time, rightfully so, and I felt like maybe you needed a a position to help with. Um, and I don't know what the position's called, is a system analyst or something, you know, that that really gets into trying to, I don't want to name names in here, but I know who's in the position. But that's, I, I felt like she needed help because she was spending lots of time. And it's always pretty difficult for any employee to, to turn over stuff. I get that. But I, those were what I was hearing and seeing were, were really, uh, uh, not that y'all weren't getting your job done, but difficulty, and you were having uh, over t lots of work time done. So these other positions, I mean, I, I just didn't want to see that that Ed or I were the ones that made the recommendation for no, four I, positions. No, I wasn't suggesting. I, I wasn't suggesting that at all. It was okay. just. It was. It, in fact, you'll see in another slide that the the positions that you and Ed had suggested to me were the senior services manager position, this priority number one, and then the assistant IT director. And, and I'm, I'm going to come back to that, assistant okay, IT okay. director. Those are the only two that y'all had recommended to me. Yeah. And so, um, again, from, from our discussions back in the spring, we had been talking about reorganizing the services group uh, division within the IT department. But in lieu of, of taking those vacant positions and, and modifying them, moving monies around, changing titles, uh, the suggestion was that instead of that, we simply add to this the senior services manager uh, over, over this. Um, I will point out, too, that over here to the left in, in red, you'll see two vacancies. The, at the bottom, the structured cabling technician vacancy, we've actually offered uh, that position already. We're going to be working with HR to figure out the best start date. And then the senior audio video specialist position, which is vacant, we're, we're going to be doing interviews starting, I believe it's next week. So we are, and, and one of the, the other third position that was vacant from the death was one of the network technician positions. We've already refilled that. So we're, we're busy trying to get those vacancies filled, um, having to select from a pretty small pool of candidates. Let's leave it at that. So that, that's my, that was my top priority. Uh, recognizing the the deficiencies in this in this third of the department, I wanted to try to address that, and so the suggestion has been made that we create the senior services manager position so that I can kind of refocus uh, the remaining staff to address those deficiencies. So I was going to spend a little more time here on the systems analyst position. This would be the second systems analyst position um, that was requested by my senior staff. Uh, because that senior staff is, is, is quite swamped, stays swamped, needs a lot of help. Um, and so I was going to, uh, in fact, I've got some more justification here for regarding this particular position. It was not included in the original justification memo submitted back in, in the beginning of May. I will forewarn you that this reads a lot like tax code. It is not in any way Thrilling. However, uh, it is all applicable, Thank you. And, and it's important. And I invite y'all to uh, peruse that at your, at your leisure. Um, I will just say that systems analysts wear a number of different hats. Um, they've got a, a lot of work to do. But what I was going to try to to point out to you is um, of the hundred or so systems that we have to support. Uh, a number of them have databases <clears throat> behind the scenes, and several of them re require or rely on integrations with one another. So here you'll see um, a, a legend that um, reflects five different kinds of databases that reside behind these applications. There's access databases, there's SQL Server databases, MySQL databases, uh, Oracle PL SQL databases, and then highlighted in the in the light green, you'll see later uh, a number of systems that utilize or rely on integration. So I'm just going to go through this quickly. There's going to be a test at the end, so 
pay attention. All right, so I, I ran through that very quickly, um, and, and I doubt any of y'all uh, were able to count it as quickly as I was running through those, but if you were able to count them, you would have found that there are 32 separate systems that are utilizing databases behind the scenes. And in most cases, I'd say most cases, in a lot of cases, those systems are actually running multiple servers and multiple instances of databases. So for example, behind Odyssey, we've got the production environment in which we do our day-to-day -day work. We've got uh, our test environment in which we load tests before we push them into production. We've got a development environment, all of which have their own servers, their own databases, and so forth and so on. All of which needs uh, attention and needs uh, servicing. Um, we're going to inherit the TriTech Inform records management system for law enforcement from the city of Bryan, which is going to bring in yet more SQL Server databases. We're going to inherit, at some point, we're going to inherit the uh, parking garage automation systems. And I don't know if you all noticed, but the last week and a half or two weeks, the, the gate arms have been up. Well, I asked the security guard why that was so, and while he wasn't exactly clear, he did indicate that apparently they had contracted a virus over there and the server had to be rebuilt. And so those gate arms are, it's computerized and that's going to be something that we're going to wind up inheriting much as we have inherited other responsibilities from various departments over the years as I showed earlier. Um, we've got capital improvements requests um, that if funded this year are going to require SQL Server for juveniles, uh, second instance of Guardian RFID. We've got uh, a request in for a sandbox environment for Oracle NetSuite, which means more Oracle PL SQL that we have to have to implement. And it just seems like every time we turn around, we're implementing and deploying more and more and more. So I hope that with all of that, uh, including the additional documentation, I have uh, convinced you that we truly do need another systems analyst. Moving on then to uh, priority three and four, I didn't really know how to rank these. Um, uh, one was going to be a project manager. As, as several of you all know, I had created a project manager position 12 years ago. I wound up donating that uh, to the county, and I kind of regret that now. I would kind of like to have a project manager position back. I would have loved to have had one um, this last week, this morning in particular, while we are trying to coordinate the activities of the RMS migration out of the City of Bryan Data Center into our data center. Anyway, there's a, there's a lot of project management work that, that we need to get done, and um, I don't have one, so I'd like to have it back. But here's priority number four, Judge, um, and this one you'll see I've tagged it as being recommended by, by you and Ed as well. And, and I recognize that y'all may want to prioritize this differently. As a, as a group, y'all may believe that this should be priority number one, and that, that it's certainly your uh, prerogative if you want to prioritize it that way. I will say that some of y'all may not know this, but <clears throat> there was an assistant IT director in the IT department back in uh, 2004, 2005, when I first got there. But at that time, we had 14 full-time employees, and, and I didn't feel like we needed an assistant IT director at that time. And so uh, I asked that that position and a couple of others be reorganized, and I created different <laughs> positions that I knew that we truly did need rather than this assistant IT director position. And so for the last 17 years, uh, I have operated without that assistant. I could use an assistant. I'm not going to argue that I can't. Um, I would I'd definitely like to get back into uh, doing more internal strategic planning for the department. I'd like to get back into doing uh, administrative policy development. Um, so there's a lot of things that I would like to do, and an assistant IT director, I won't argue, would definitely be of some of some help, of great help, in fact. So, so with all of that said, I, w I had told you I was going to circle back to this. This is the, um, again, this is the growth line of the full-time employee count over the last 18 years. And I'm going to overlay that with, a, with a, an orange line. This <coughs> orange line is reflective of a space needs analysis that was conducted in 2005 by the county. And back when that was, uh, was produced, at that time, it was predicted that the IT department in FY25 would need 27 full-time employees. And so you will see that I've mapped this thing out, and we did quite well staying below that anticipated uh, full-time employee count all the way up until we went live with Odyssey in FY16. So in FY16, we... Um, 
we hit our predicted amount and then we've just been blowing past it ever since then. So that uh, should help explain why we are in need of more space. Now, this is a page from the justification letter that I submitted back in, in May, and this is, the, this is the violation of the cardinal rule not to put a slide up with nothing but text. But I thought I'd just go ahead and repeat it here in its, uh, in its entirety. I had, in fact, I had said in this uh, letter, and it still says as much, that I currently have cubicle space for one additional employee. That's not correct. I now have cubicle space for two additional employees. And the reason for that is we took the new, uh, the new network engineer position and we doubled them up in a small office with the existing network engineer. So I actually have two uh, cubicle spaces available. And then if, if they were all four funded, I could find um, space to put additional cubicle furniture somewhere in that building. It won't be the most comfortable, uh, but we could certainly stay all stay under one roof uh, if we had to. And again, I point out that there, at least there was uh, cubicle furniture available in the low risk building out there at the jail. If that's still available, that may be an option for us. But I had thrown out here some alternative solutions, um, one of which is to start housing people outside of the Maxwell Center. I mean, I'm not, I'm not advocating for that. I'd rather stay under one roof, but recognizing the you know, comfort level contributes a lot to uh, job performance and satisfaction. I'm certainly willing to, to talk about putting people elsewhere. Um, North Wing up here in the second floor, might, you know, might be an option. But I wanted to, I wanted to really to kind of talk a little bit more about numbers two and, and three here. We could allow employees to telecommute. Now, certainly not everybody in IT can telecommute. But I am thinking of, of some specific positions that are currently occupying cubicles that might be good candidates for telecommuting. We already know that it, it, can, it can be done. And if they were to telecommute, that could free up cubicle space for those who cannot telecommute. Um, it would also free up the need to provide them with county-owned equipment. It, that is to say, if, if a person were permanently telecommuting, they do so with their own personal equipment. We don't provide them with equipment, which means we don't have to keep replacing that equipment again and again and again. And then you'll see in, in number three, uh, I had suggested maybe we could introduce some sort of shift work. And by that, what I mean is a lot of people think of shift work as, you know, working from, from, from 4 a.m. until noon and then from noon until 8 p.m. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about allowing people to telecommute a month at a time. So they go home for a month at a time, telecommute, while somebody else sits in that cubicle in front of that single piece of county-owned equipment and works from that county-owned equipment in the cubicle for a month, and then they swap. So we've reduced the equipment requirement by half for those who can telecommute at least. So I thought I would throw these options out here, uh, maybe let you be thinking about it, kind of kicking it around. And with that, I think I am done, and we'll stop and release the rest of the time to my colleagues. You all have any questions for me? Yeah, as far as space goes, um, there is space over there that is used for training, I know. Could that be repurposed? And if we were able to find a suitable place to have training in, in another location? Y yes, sir. I'm sorry, I, I didn't even think to mention that, but that, that an idea that I have been kicking around. If we could relocate that training room, yeah. that leaves quite a bit of space over there for remodeling, either to put in more cubicles or, or put in walls and doors for, for office space. Um, that I would be, I would be happier with that than locating people out from underneath that roof. Right. I'd rather keep the people under the roof that I can, and put the training room elsewhere if that's an option. Yeah. Well, if there was training that we do, I mean, I know that we've got to keep the Maxwell Center secure, 
and the security has to be very high there for entry and whoever's there and that. If we were to relocate that facility, maybe redesign it, I've advocated that we have a facilities survey and take a look at that. But if we could relocate that someplace else that wouldn't require access to your building and a higher security take away from uh, people's time on making sure we've got the right people getting in and getting out, that might be a suitable solution, I think, of that I'd like to explore, I think would be worth exploring uh, with the space needs that you have at Maxwell Center. Sure. Just a thought. Sure. Well, and, and that's part of the discussion that we've had for a good while. The <clears throat> What is the old sanctuary area down there that is at very limited use, uh, converting that to an area that could be used for training, not only for, for IT, but I mean, the sheriff's office comes in and asks nearly every year about a training area. There's a lot of times that we need training areas. So by uh, utilizing that and spend some money to uh, remodel that to make it a, a, uh, a, a an area that would be uh, much more acceptable as a training area, we might could do that. I mean, and that would uh, free up that training area that you've got over there sure. so that's I'm, something we've talked about for a long time we just it, it'll cost a lot of money to get it done that's one of the places that I had hoped that we might could spend some ARPA money and and uh, get that that facility down there uh, brought up to speed hey, Eric I had a question I, I understood that priority one the senior services manager might be uh, succession part of a succession plan and then it looked like to me that priority four the assistant IT director would actually be the person that was in charge in, in your absence are those two positions somehow interrelated or not at all no sir the the senior services manager would be over only one-third of the department so I've got I've got three divisions in there I've got I've got networking which is responsible for network hardware data center services I've got the systems group, which is responsible for applications, development application support, and then I've got the, the rest of the functionality under a services group. So that is, um, that's all things help desk, that's training, that is uh, inventory management, it includes audio video. Um, and and how, much, how many st staff do you have in the services group? Uh, if it was in there, I'll go. I'll go back and find it. It's uh, page there. four, six, ten, eleven, twelve. Right now. Twelve. Yes, sir. Okay. Out of a total of thirty-four. Thirty-four. About a third of your. Yes, sir. And it would it go to after recommended restructuring? It would go to thirteen. Yes, sir. With the senior services manager assuming that it was added. And, and this priority is based on your, your needs and your opinion, the one through four? Yes, sir. Now, again, the, the succession with an assistant IT director, um, I mean, I, I certainly understand, you know, I certainly understand the, the need for that. I will say that if I were to get hit by a bus going home this afternoon, um, there are people on my staff that could step up. Now, I haven't cross-trained them on some of the things that I you know, am solely responsible for, budget development and, and things of that nature, but they've been with me long enough now that they could step up fairly easily. Now, does that mean that they're going to be my first choice if this position were created and I need to fill it? That remains to be seen. I would, I would want to post the position and, you know, and vet candidates uh, to find the best person for the job. That's always been my, my philosophy. I promote up from within if I can, but never do myself or the department or the county a disservice by promoting up the wrong person. So. Your, your current budget in dollars? I know this is about a $530,000 increase total cost based on those positions. Very expensive. And, and I will say, too, that's one of the reasons why, after debating the prioritization, that assistant IT director being the most expensive of the four, okay. it, 
took a hit based solely on the on the cost of the county. So. What is that as a percentage, Katie? You're a numbers person. 19% of last year's. Uh, no, I'm talking about what would a half million dollar increase be on 7.4 million, about five? Seven percent. Yeah, I'm, thinking, I'm yeah. thinking about seven percent. Well, I mean, you've heard the discussion about adding to the proposed the seven and a half percent cola. And so, uh, based on those kinds of things, I mean, I think the requests that have come in, we're certainly going to have to take a hard look about uh, any request, and because we got to balance this thing some way. Right, right. And if we've added in those numbers to try to take care of employees on the front end, then we're going to have to figure out sure. what what all of the requests are going to have to be drop out. You know? Sure. So, and while. Early on, when we talked about positions, and I think it is a good idea. I mean, that assistant director position that's probably off the table. You know, I mean, there's just too much. Uh, right. And, and that's why I, I went ahead and assigned them priority numbers. You know, trying to take into account the, the cost and the the most immediate needs. Mm -hmm. So, based on the most immediate needs, uh, that's the reason I am requesting that senior services manager position first and foremost. So, uh, and, and I know that like for, in the instance of Oracle, uh, yeah. we've reached out to a third party and have done some of the budget, you know, re, uh, resourced outside for that. I mean, and, and is there that opportunity for some of the other pieces of Oracle that we can uh, go out to a third party vendor to try to do a lot of, or, or some of the things that Instead of putting more positions on to to uh, uh, well, fill that the, need. I guess the two-part answer to that is yeah. I mean, there there may be opportunities to go out and find outside assistance for, for Oracle, but if you remember the 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 slides where I had highlighted in colors the, all of those different databases, uh, you may remember that uh, of those 34 different systems that have databases behind them, four of them had Oracle. That leaves 30 of them that have nothing to do with Oracle whatsoever. And then again, the, the, of the integrations, I think two of them maybe were uh, reliant on Oracle. The remaining nine have nothing to do with Oracle. And so the need for that, the need for that, the systems analyst, uh, I, I won't say has very little to do with Oracle, but, but Oracle only plays a, a small part and what we would be expecting this new systems analyst, if it were to get funded, what we would be expecting that new systems analyst to uh, to be taken care of. How but, much would how much would you budget the assistant uh, IT director of the five hundred twenty nine thousand? Hundred and six, I think it is. After the seven and a half percent cola, yeah. I think the I think the salary would be one hundred and fourteen. Total increase of $159,538 just for salary and benefits. That's not including equipment. So almost a third. Yeah. But that's an additional three people, right? Four I'm sorry? People? Additional four? The, the addition of, four? I'm sorry, I didn't know. Four positions. Question. She's four asking people. if you're asking for four positions. I, I am asking for four positions, Re recognizing that, you know, that, that money's not infinite. So, yes. again, that's why I prioritize them the way that I did, trying yes. to meet the most immediate needs as, a, as I see them. Yes. And, Eric, I think we've discussed this before about the Oracle, that if we were able to get a third-party contract that could help um, with some of the Oracle, that might relieve the positions that are specifically dedicated to Oracle right now and then um, maybe free them up to do perhaps and it depends on what that uh, yes that is certainly an opportunity I, I think you have to recognize though that in most cases I don't think it's the systems analyst <laughs> and most yeah I don't think it's gonna be the systems analyst if anything it might be the applications administrators but in most cases you're paying that outside consultant the same salary, the same benefits, plus the shareholders' uh, dividends. Um, 
are you going to get the same kind of work for that for that dollar spend? The experience might make up for it, though. Experience might make up for it. Sure. I put it to you this way: I'm not opposed. I'm not in any way opposed. Yeah, and that's why I think we that. talked sure. about it before. Sure. Having worked for a consulting firm before in another industry, the factor is usually about three or more. In other words, the cost of that person, and they had a multiplier of three on it. So. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Thank you. Now we get to Thank the part you. where I don't have to have direction today, but eventually I do. We do. Thank you. Should we go on and comment to you now? I mean, knowing that we've got, I think, a, a good many of requests kind of coming up. Yes. I'd the, be, um, I would be reluctant to add much uh, because uh, we're. Uh, I mean, total if it's requests. Not critical. If it's not a critical position, then I'd be reluctant this year to be plugging in. Uh, positions total but request is five point five point nine million for all the offices so far it's on I, the screen if that helps I'd rather as far as the uh, personnel requests I'd rather look at all of them before we actually try to start plugging them in before we really make specific designations I think it would give us a, it would, personally it would give me a better perspective on what the overall needs are relative to um, where we can go because I'm, 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 I, I would just like to see the whole picture first I, mean, I know that you would like to have a it's the quicker you can get an answer to get that plugged into the budget, budget the better off you are. But I, mm -hmm. I, I would, I am pretty reluctant about starting to plug positions in. Uh, what I want, what I get, are two different things. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, what I want, what I get, are two different things. We, the alternative. That's why we do all these numbers to kind of give you an idea. The, Excuse al me. the alternative would be is is to give advice to build those build positions we think have merit in and then go through all of those for, with each one and then come back later on and look at things overall and compare them so judge uh, i can I'd, I'd rather uh, go through all of these and hear um, their pitches for uh, additional staff and then uh, weigh them and and make uh, recommendations to staff at the end of the day based on these presentations so you want to divide it up by workshop because we have two more of these yeah. after okay. today. Yeah. So, okay, so that, that 5909 number, 28 and three quarter percent, 28.75 positions. Yes, sir. Uh, that's all the requests. Some of which we expect to change, but no guarantee yet. Okay, and and that is based on the uh, salaries that were requested for the positions. Yes, group, sir. Groups and steps plus increases, and also inclu includes a seven and a half percent increase. Yes, sir. Okay. It also includes equipment. Right. Well, it says still need needs. to update with seven point five cola. Here that's on, the yellow what? ones, yes, on, sir. On that, okay, so that's just the ones that are highlighted. Yes, sir. Okay. And that's a pretty big chunk of the picture. Yes, sir. Uh, or, uh, that's roughly a third, I guess, or... It's because we're meeting with the SO and Jill tomorrow to go over their request again. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. So okay. why don't we continue with our list of today? Yeah. Okay. Find my agenda. 
County Attorney. Earl. I think you'll like this one. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Brazos County Attorney Earl Gray. Uh, hopefully, I have some good news, uh, especially when it comes to budgeting meetings. Uh, it, it is our plan, our belief that uh, we hope to return some money uh, or save the county money uh, this year. Uh, we have, since I took office, we have focused on efficiency in our office. Uh, we continue to try to do as many things with as, as few p uh, positions as we possibly could. We've gone through and we, we've dug in and we've looked at some restructuring of different, without getting into a lot of the details, we restructured uh, some of our various staff positions. Uh, we've shifted some folks around within those staff positions and, and we, we hope to save the uh, county about 123 thousand dollars this year uh, and some change I think the exact number is 123,695 to be more precise and and of course that's that's not factoring any type of cola or anything of that nature if you were to add you know 1.0725 whatever that is I it would obviously be more uh, than that and uh, that's about all I have um, it appears that I apologize if I'm reading your report correctly sir Yes, ma'am. You have, uh, you have, you you would be given back 2.75 positions. Uh, well, Is that should actually be. Well, we've restructured some positions, and then then we I believe we had four positions that uh, we would be basically uh, doing away with. But the, so, the sum is the 123? Yes, ma'am, 123695 uh -huh. without COLA. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Well, I like that. Yeah. I, I, and I didn't Gordon, think I'd have a lot of uh, problems. Pardon, you sorry. all would have any problems <laughs> with no that. No problems from me. Yeah, I'd like, None I'd, here. I'd, I'd, actually, I'd like to know more about how you were able to be able to carry on what I know is a growing workload and be able to have this as a as something you've done in your restructuring sure so you know initially when i first took office um, what i had all of the employees uh, to do including you know we have numerous we have five investigators uh, with my department we have numerous staff positions and i actually had them each go through an entire week we didn't do this on a day in day out basis for more than uh, i believe it was just that week because it would become fairly cumbersome but actually having each individual log or keep a separate uh, calendar or notation as to what they were spending time on throughout the day you know what did you do from eight you know from eight to nine mm -hmm. and so we went through all of this and then I, I basically took what individuals were actually working or they believed that they were working uh, and then I sat down with my first assistant and my administrative assistant uh, Teresa and we went through those in detail to see what we would really need in that particular position. Now, of course, I factored in the, you know, most of my, my folks, if not all of my folks, were not, you know, a, a akin to, to having, ha having to keep time. Uh, that, that's more uh, of something you would find in a civil firm uh, when there's hour, hourlies, you know, are being billed and things like that. They're, they're used to keeping track of those 15 minute increments and things of that nature and so our folks were obviously not uh, accustomed to doing that and so I, I factored in that that margin of error of about you know about 30 percent and so you know this is not a you know I'm, I'm cutting it to the bones and, and and this is not something we're going to be able to survive with I I in all in all honesty I believe that we can survive with what we have and, and I, I do not believe that we're going to need to add anything uh, to this year's budget, and I, I no way want to uh, you know, prevent myself from asking for more money in, in years to come, if, if so be the need. But at least for right now, I, I believe this is uh, proper, and I think we can manage with what we have. And do we take from this that the workload will not suffer, that the cases will move yes, as absolutely. they are? Yeah, you this is in no way reducing any type of efficiency level as far as the court. And in fact, we'll continue to, to 
try to do a better job each and every year on that as well. Great. We're going to continue to try to be more, you know, courts going to paperless cer certainly has helped things, mm -hmm. I, I believe. And, and so although we, we are required to, to maintain certain uh, uh, paper files and things of that certainly. nature, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to strive with, to, you know, we, we understand we have limited resources for the county. We understand we have limited resources within our, our own uh, office. And mm -hmm. so, uh, and, and we certainly understand with all the, uh, the, the rise in inflation, all these wonderful things that we're having to deal with that uh, money's tight right now. And uh, again, we, we feel very comfortable with, with our budget and, and we don't think it's gonna move much. The needle's gonna move much this year anyways. Were you able to use uh, any of the functionality that's with our Oracle system in doing this? I know that it's got modules and it's got <clears> things that are built in as far as that goes, but I was just curious if you were able to use that. I'd, I'd, I'd like to say a resounding no. Okay. I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't deal with it at the level that Teresa does, but I, I've not heard a lot of just praises when it comes to Oracle uh, from, from a lot of my folks. But, you know, <clears> that being said, I, I, I can't say that definitively. Maybe that has saved. Okay. Save some time. I don't know, okay. uh, but I, I don't believe it. Well, I was just curious because I know that we've got a lot of functionality in Oracle that we're not really taking full advantage of. To and then this would seem to me like a really great place to have done it if that was available. But thank you for however, whichever way you arrived at this. Uh, I, I think that's, gosh, I, I, I can't tell you how. Uh, much I appreciate that and uh, champion your type of perspective uh, towards assessing uh, what your needs are uh, for us to be able to find the funds to appropriate to them. So thank you. And, and I think it was probably less less with the Oracle because Oracle is dealing more with the, the payroll and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, Odyssey, I can say with the court system, we okay. do we do use. I will say Odyssey. It depends on what you do with Odyssey. Uh, we use Odyssey quite a bit. Um, okay. Our, our note-taking section is critical. It allows us, that does save time, okay. um, where I don't have to run down to, uh, you know, one of my attorney's offices and say, hey, hey, Bob, you know, what do we do on this particular case? All I have to do is I have to pull it up in Odyssey, and I can go right to the note section. Mm -hmm. And we, we use that real efficiently, I think, in the county attorney's office. So yeah. that being said, I think that probably has helped. Okay. Well, that's always the, I mean, the, the, the idea on systems and software is, is yeah, they're, they will generate savings, but you don't nearly know where they're accounted for. Sure. I have to admit, I'm not so much interested in how you're applying the softwares and the different programs um, that we attempt to provide, but I'm interested in how and who were, not names, but what positions did you reclassify and, and how were they reclassified? Can you share more about that? I'm able to go into that without going into the special, I didn't want no, to. I no, don't, I don't want you to just to give us any specific names or positions, but how did you come about this? I'm, there's got to be some secret that you could share with us. <laughs> well, I, and I don't, I don't know if I have that, that, you know, uh, magic acorn, so to speak. Uh, I, I can tell you that without getting into the titles of those positions, because I'm, I, I'm concerned that that may yes. reveal information. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but I can, I can, that we had two part-time uh, positions. Mm -hmm. as well as, I believe, two full-time positions uh, that we would not be needing. Okay. Uh, without detailing what those positions and are. And this was after your assessment? Yes, ma'am. Okay, That's and that was correct. clear to you? Great. So, okay. without getting into more detail mm -hmm. and exposing information, so. Well, I'm all for efficiency. Uh, and, we, and we'll continue to do that. And I yes, appreciate that. Absolutely. I hate we're not going to work together too long, but <laughs> it's a pleasure. Oh, you bet. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. My, my compliments to you on your management style. We appreciate this. It's oh, well, thank you, Mr. Spot on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth.
You bet. Is there any additional questions? We have no comment. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. So I did plug that one in. Yes. Plug that <laughs> in. No at hesitation. Least, at least one time. And I would encourage the court to consider data-driven information when determining new positions and how positions are added to the budget. Yes. It becomes a, a much less about the people and more about the position and exactly. the work that needs to be done. And I think, I know some people don't agree, but what he described was kind of a time study. Yes. Where, and you count phone calls and you count because yes. those do take time and you yes. count meetings and you can Yes. But that's how you find out, you know, where maybe putting something together for one part in one position helps alleviate others. I certainly agree. Mm -hmm. And I recommend that others try at least that style of management. All right. Karen? Judge, sorry, I don't really have a PowerPoint like Eric, and I'm not giving anything back like Earl. So. Could you talk into the microphone? <laughs> if I get to talking too fast, let me know. Um, we requested, or I requested a, a clerk for position this year, and I went back and did some research with the help of Marty at IT to look at the number of probate and guardianship cases that we're filing, and mainly I'm looking at the guardianship cases. Um, I have two charts here. One is the number of cases filed, and you can see they go up and down, up and down. There's no rhyme or reason. It's the second set of numbers, the number of events that happen within a case. The event is not only opening the case, but working the case and everything that happens after it's been open. Mm -hmm. On a probate, we get the application, we get the will, it goes to court, executors appointed, inventories filed, and it's disposed, it's done. The guardianship cases are the cases that linger on, and it can be of a minor until that minor turns 18, oh, I or I would say probably 80% of our cases are, are elderly mm -hmm. that have dementia or someone's taken advantage of them. I have three clerks that do probate, one for each court, and the court clerk who works the queues, takes care of the copies, issues letters for the probate. I have one clerk for, and can I say she, since you can't tell who it is, she takes care of all the guardianship. She intakes, she does TROs when we're having to do restraining orders, she does citations. She meets with the court every week. She's on the front line. She sees things that come in that the court needs to know about, or if there's a delinquent file, uh, delinquency in filing their accountings. Mm -hmm. She meets with that court because she sees it first. That's not her job, but it helps the court to know what's going on in that case because the main purpose of that case is, case is to protect the ward, protect them physically, and to protect their assets. So the number from January to June the 7th, we have touched these cases 12,731 times compared to the last year. Mm -hmm. When she gets bogged down, what little bit I remember, I can help her do certain things. But the guardianship laws are so strict that trying to get someone to learn them part-time while doing other duties, we're afraid things will slip through the cracks. Certainly. So I'm asking for a position to do nothing but guardianship. They won't split the courts because I think what she does is very important, but sh that new position will work with her to make sure that the things get done in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. So that is my pitch to you for a new new position. And also the, the position court investigator, Mr. Hammond, I say that he is very <clears throat> instrumental in following up with these wards we've been audited by the OCA on our back ones and we got a very very good report only a few were not compliant um, a lot of counties are not in the best shape that we are but because of his effort and his uh, individual 
we're able to keep these uh, uh, cases online and, and going forward. But I fear that if the numbers keep growing, we're not going to be able to maintain the service that we're doing now. Okay. And I did request whether the increase in filings increases revenues, but unfortunately there is not a direct correlation. No. Um, in most cases they are. Right. are uh, well, and the Supreme Court passed the affidavit of inability to pay, and we're seeing a lot of those, and it's based on the ward's income. So certainly. a lot of our elderly are on Social Security, and right. pretty much that's it. There, there is no assets but the home and maybe a car and a small bank account. So a lot of what we do file, there is no filing fee And the service is, is very much needed yes. in those cases. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, if we're not there, predators take yes. advantage of. Yes, and our Constable Precinct 2 has served quite a few restraining orders when we found that happening. Yeah, mm. and I'm happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. I appreciate what you are doing and what yes, your uh, department does for all of Brazos County. Yes, ma'am, and, and whatever uh, your decision is, we will get the work done. Yes. That's always been my motto, we will get it done. It just may take a little bit. I'm 